Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Nick, and today we're going to talk about Star Wars. Rise of Skywalker is out in theaters now, and the nine-part series known as the Skywalker Saga has finally come to an end, 42 years after the release of A New Hope back in 1977. And fans are divided, to say the least. In fact, when it comes to all the Star Wars movies, outside of the original trilogy, pretty much anything that came after that is the subject of heated debate. The prequel trilogy, when it was first released, was nearly despised by all audiences, and while the sequel trilogy by Disney has fared better in comparison, fans still have very much a love it or hate it relationship with those movies. Depending on who you ask, some rank the sequels as some of the series' best, while others hate them so much that they even give the prequels a little more respect. But I recently rewatched all the live action movies leading up to Rise of Skywalker, including Rogue One and Solo, and wanted to take a quick moment to discuss which ones still held up and which ones didn't so much. Now before I begin, I am going to get into a little bit of spoiler territory with these movies, in particular the sequels, so if you haven't seen all the Star Wars movies, this is your spoiler warning, especially because it is hard to discuss some of these movies without getting into spoiler territory. But without further ado, from worst to best, this is my ranking of the Star Wars movies. At number 11 is Attack of the Clones. I gotta say, in terms of story, this actually isn't the worst of the bunch. There are some interesting concepts that I liked, such as the internal conflicts of Anakin as well as the rise of Palpatine. But it takes too long to get to the point. This is a very boring movie, which is something I never thought I'd say about Star Wars. There really isn't much going on in the first half outside of two things. One is the political talk that goes on for way too long, and two is the cringy romance between Padme and Anakin. And the problem is, there's just no chemistry between Hayden Christensen and Natalie Portman. The dialogue's very stiff and unbelievable, and Hayden Christensen's performance is very wooden. And because this is one of the main focuses of the movie, it's really quick for this to get on your nerves. A lot of that inner turmoil that Anakin's experiencing comes off more as whining, and because of that, he never comes off as a really compelling character. There are a few things to praise here though. Once Count Dooku actually shows up in the second half, the story does pick up a little bit, and a lot of the fight sequences here are fun to watch. Plus, Ewan McGregor's performance as Obi-Wan Kenobi is enjoyable as it is with the rest of the prequel trilogy. But that aside, this movie overall just didn't do too much for me. At number 10 is The Phantom Menace. While I put this just above Attack of the Clones, the story here is messier. Things such as explaining the Force to be midichlorians, as well as Anakin being the product of midichlorians, is just laughable. And the excessive focus on Jar Jar Binks is just as aggravating today as it was when this movie was first released. It's never funny, nor is it charming, and it makes you just want to fast forward anytime he's on screen. Plus, like with Attack of the Clones, this movie can just be boring at times. Every Jedi who isn't Qui-Gon or Obi-Wan just sits around and talks politics for extended periods of time, and it's never really interesting, nor does it really add much to the plot. But I will give this movie a little more credit than Attack of the Clones, because I do enjoy the visuals and the action scenes a little more here. In particular, any of the fights against Darth Maul, who is by far one of the best things about this movie. If there's one element of the prequels that they at least did right, it's the fact that they always had interesting villains who felt like viable threats. So, anytime Darth Maul was on screen, I found myself enjoying the movie a bit more. And while the dialogue is messy, I'd say the acting here is overall stronger than it was in Attack of the Clones. Both Ewan McGregor and Liam Neeson are fine, and even Natalie Portman's not bad. Though, all that being said, I still wouldn't call this movie good, to be honest. It's okay at best. Coming in at number 9 is Rise of Skywalker. This suffered from some of the same problems that Attack of the Clones had, in which it had some interesting concepts, but its execution was way off. It's obvious when watching this movie that Disney had no real plan in place going into the sequel trilogy. This felt strictly like a response to fans' dislike of The Last Jedi, rather than the proper conclusion of a story set up by two other movies. The inclusion of Palpatine here never feels like it organically fit into the story, and it's obvious he was forced in as a last minute replacement since they killed off Snoke, and the movie never cares to properly explain how he even came back into the picture in the first place. Though the biggest issue I had is that everything feels rushed, and every interesting concept presented is often undone immediately. A character seemingly dies, and that's revealed to not be the case in the next scene. One character is revealed to be a spy, and that storyline is abandoned as quickly as it was introduced. We're introduced to new characters, and we're reintroduced to some old characters, but after a few lines of dialogue, the movie moves on, and we never really feel the true impact of their presence. It feels like the movie was going down a checklist of things to include, rather than taking its time to have moments of genuine emotion. The only way we get that emotion is through the performances. Adam Driver gives by far the most compelling performance in this movie as Kylo Ren, and Daisy Ridley is very charming to watch as well. 
And some of the supporting performances are very funny, in particular Anthony Daniels as C-3PO, who is given by far his biggest role in the series to date. Like all the other weaker Star Wars entries, it is visually stunning, and all the action sequences are a lot of fun to watch. But overall, this ended the Skywalker saga more on a whimper than a bang. Number 8 is Solo. So this is the point on the list where I'd say the movies get to at least being good. Solo gets a lot of hate, mainly for its lack of world building as opposed to many of the other movies, and that's understandable. I mean, the only thing major this really adds to the Star Wars mythology is just showing how Han met both Lando and Chewie, but beyond that, that's it. So for some, that's frustrating, and I get it. It's a very low-stakes movie compared to many other Star Wars movies, but it's honestly a fun time. Visually, like any other Star Wars movie, it's great. Ron Howard's direction is really on point here. And the cast is also a lot of fun to watch. Alden Ehrenreich makes for a great young Han Solo, while Amelia Clark and Woody Harrelson are great additions to the supporting cast. Though it's Donald Glover who steals the show as Lando, chewing up the scenery every moment he's on screen. He brings a lot of charm to the role, and honestly, if they were to do a standalone Lando movie with Glover returning, I'd be on board. Number 7 is Revenge of the Sith. Now, a lot of the problems that Attack of the Clones and Phantom Menace had are still present here, although not to the same degree as they were in those two movies. Some of the dialogue is still wooden, and Hayden Christensen's performance isn't all that great at times, and his chemistry with Natalie Portman is still shoddy at best. But it's all at least an improvement, so while there still are problems, they don't totally derail the experience this time around. Of all the prequels, this was the most directly related to the original trilogy, and honestly, I would have rather seen the entire prequel trilogy set in this particular period of time. We see Anakin turn to the dark side, we see the official rise of Palpatine, we see the fall of the Jedi Council. All this was paced much better than the other two films, and were some of the most emotional moments in the entire prequel trilogy. It's even more visually stunning than either Attack of the Clones or The Phantom Menace, plus it has Ewan McGregor's best performance as Obi-Wan Kenobi. I remembered legitimately enjoying this when I first saw it, and I still did the second time around. Despite some obvious issues, it actually holds up quite well. Coming in at number 6 is Return of the Jedi. Now, I know this is ranked kind of low, but I would just like to point out that Return of the Jedi is a great movie, and this goes for pretty much any other movie I have to talk about on this list from here on out. But, one thing I think we can all agree on is that, as good as the original trilogy is, Return of the Jedi is not as good as either A New Hope or The Empire Strikes Back. The main issue is for its pacing, in particular the Ewok scenes. While I don't have a problem with the Ewoks themselves, there is a lot of time spent just messing around with them and it makes the movie feel like it goes on a bit too long. The same thing goes for some of the music scenes and other stuff that goes on inside Jabba the Hutt's hideout. There are comedic bits that just don't work and it makes the first half of the movie feel stretched out a little bit too much. That being said, there's still a lot in this movie that's really enjoyable. The actual fight against Jabba the Hutt is still one of the highlights for me from the original trilogy. I always found it to be pure fun. And all the Vader and Emperor scenes are classic, of course. Palpatine is by far one of the most iconic movie villains in history, and I love watching Ian McDermott just chew up all the scenery every time he's on screen. I always find it to be endlessly enjoyable. Plus, there are plenty of great emotional moments that wrap up the main storyline, in particular thanks to Mark Hamill, who gives his most dialed-in performance as Luke. Despite this being the weakest of the original trilogy, he's at his most emotionally mature here, and at his most compelling to watch. So while the movie's slightly bumpy at times, it's overall a fitting end to the original trilogy. Number 5 is The Last Jedi. One of the most divisive entries in the entire Star Wars saga. I honestly love this movie. I liked it a lot the first time around, and I liked it even more when I saw it again. In hindsight, knowing that each of the films in the sequel trilogy were the result of lack of planning is a little disappointing, but I still love the direction this movie went in. Ryan Johnson took a lot of risks with this movie. A lot of people criticize Luke's characterization here, but I think it was a natural progression for him, in the sense that this is one of the most noble characters in all of film history, and something happened that shook even him. I found that to be an excellent character arc. And despite the fact that they were undone in the next movie, I found that getting rid of Snoke and the initial reveal that Rey's parents were no one were bold choices, and it gives the movie this sense of realism, in the sense that not every important character needs to be directly linked to some other important character. It's a big galaxy, and not everyone's going to be directly related. The only major criticisms I have for this movie are anything involving Leia, in particular the one scene in space where she's using the Force. She spent most of the movie sidelined, and when she was around, she really wasn't given much to do. And the whole casino sequence, I actually don't hate that as much as everyone else does. I think it could have just been paced a little better, and honestly, it would have been fine overall. But overall, this was a much different take on Star Wars that I really enjoyed, and I don't know if Ryan Johnson's still planning his own trilogy, but if he is, I'm very much looking forward to seeing it. Number 4 is The Force Awakens. Now, I know this is essentially a rehash of A New Hope, but here's the thing. A New Hope was a really fun movie, 
And since this followed a lot of that same story structure, this in turn is also a really fun movie. It is a little copy and paste, but it still had enough of its own personality to make it really enjoyable. After the very somber and very dense prequel trilogy, it was refreshing to see Star Wars return to being more lighthearted and even funny at times. Plus, unlike the prequels where the characters weren't as likable, I was immediately invested in Rey, Poe, and Finn, and Daisy Ridley, Oscar Isaac, and John Boyega all did great jobs with these characters. Even Adam Driver as Kylo Ren is really compelling here. I know there was some initial shock seeing the whiny boyfriend from Girls as this new trilogy's main villain, but he has a really solid character arc, and once you get over that jarring initial appearance, it's easier to appreciate his story. Overall, this movie is a little more of the same, but it is a fun reintroduction to this world, and it stands out as one of the most purely entertaining Star Wars movies. Number 3 is Rogue One. While Force Awakens was a lot of fun, Rogue One is just epic. This is one of the only Star Wars movies that feels like an all-out war movie. The battle scenes are truly intense, and you feel how high the stakes are in each and every scene. Plus, being that it takes place right before A New Hope, it does an excellent job of recapturing the feel of the original trilogy, while still feeling fresh and moving forward and not relying solely on fan service. A lot of the criticism directed towards this movie is regarding the digital recreation of Peter Cushing and Carrie Fisher, and that's understandable. For some, it's a little weird to see these figures from decades ago digitally recreated for a modern film. Though I gotta give credit where credit's due, it does look realistic, and honestly, I think they would have been criticized no matter what decision they made. Had they decided to cast new actors in these roles, I think that would have also been a problem. For me, this was fine though. This is overall one of the strongest entries in the series, and I hope to see more like it. At number two is A New Hope, the one that started it all. Like I said, this movie is pure fun. I can easily just turn this movie on if I want to have a good time watching a Star Wars movie. A lot of the dialogue is extremely quotable, and a lot of sequences such as the opening, the cantina scene, the Death Star sequences, the name a few, are still just as entertaining now as they were when I first saw them. It's a little cheesy at times, especially given how George Lucas was heavily influenced by Flash Gordon serials when writing this movie, and it shows, but it's never too ham-fisted or over the top to keep you from enjoying the movie. Though, one thing I forgot about this movie is that it throws you right in the middle of things. In the first few minutes, you're introduced to so many key players who are only seen for a few minutes, and the movie moves on, and there's a lot thrown at you. It's at least a half hour or so before the movie takes a moment to explain everything to you and let you know what What's going on. And what's funny is that's something we typically wouldn't excuse in a movie today, so it's interesting that when it comes to Star Wars, we give this a pass. I think for a lot of us growing up on Star Wars, it's something we don't fully realize until much later on, and given everything else that came after it, by the time we realize it, it's not a big deal. That aside, this still holds up as one of the best Star Wars movies around, and overall, it's a great time. And at number one, it's The Empire Strikes Back. This movie truly is a masterpiece. It maintains that sense of fun that A New Hope had, but it gives it an extra layer of depth that makes it a truly emotional experience. While I still do love A New Hope, it's clear that with The Empire Strikes Back, George Lucas had a much better sense of what he was doing here, and he knew what he wanted more. While A New Hope was written as a standalone space adventure, The Empire Strikes Back was where Lucas decided that this would be part of something much larger. So there was much more at stake this time around, and many key moments here had drastic consequences on the entire series. And everything that worked so well about A New Hope was improved upon here. The characters were better developed, the performances were much more dialed in, the production values were a lot more polished, and the grand scale of things just felt even more epic. This is a true sci-fi classic, and while there are many great Star Wars movies, this remains the very best one. So that's my look back at Star Wars. It's been quite a ride. Now that the Skywalker saga is in theory behind us, hopefully whatever Disney puts out next will just be a fresh star and explore a different part of the galaxy. Because honestly, the possibilities are endless. I'm hoping for something more in line with how The Mandalorian's been, because that's been pretty solid, but we'll see. But anyway, what's your favorite Star Wars movie, and what's your least favorite Star Wars movie? Did you like Rise of Skywalker? Did you enjoy the sequel trilogy in general? Have your opinions of any of the other movies changed over time? Let me know in the comments below, and if you like what you see, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you soon.